All right, so some of you have probably seen my reciprocating compressor cutaway video. And just so you're aware, that was completely coincidental that it ended up being a Bristol T8 series, which is the compressor that unloads one of the cylinders, one of the pistons, when it runs in the opposite direction. So when it runs one way, it pumps both pistons. When it runs the other way, it only pumps one. And uh, it turned out great because uh, it's one of the most interesting compressors ever made, in my opinion, in residential. It's had a lot of issues. There was a, uh, I don't want to say a recall, but there was a accommodations made by carrier been a lot of issues with it and uh, the one i pulled apart it had a burn start winding and didn't appear to have anything else significantly wrong with it but it's a very interesting thing that they've done and so i want to use this opportunity to talk about how it's wired so if you look at this schematic so we've got a um, an actual schematic diagram over here and then we have a, a connection diagram which actually shows how it's wired in real life so uh, two things I want to point out this is ch this is a uh, contactor high so if you look down here you can see it says that contactor high capacity, 24 volt coil and contactor low capacity, 24 volt coil. So those, that's going to be where we're focused here. So you're going to notice the high capacity contactor has a contact point on it. And it also has a it's like a plus one contactor. So it just has a, a straight through connection that do, doesn't make or break. So L2 is constantly connected. And then you have a contact. And then with the low capacity contactor, you just have a contact. Let's go through and show how this is wired because it's actually pretty simple. But first thing you'll notice is that the start capacitor and the start relay, as well as the compressor capacitor, are connected in between these high and low. So that's kind of strange, right? But then the next thing you'll notice is that both high and low both connect to the same point. They both connect to L1. If you have high contactor is pulled in, then you're going to have current that moves through here, moves through like a traditional start relay. So you go through your, you know, your start capacitor, start relay, the you know, typical kind of wiring uh, configuration here, 521 wiring con configuration. <music> through and feeds through to the start winding. That's when this one is closed and this one is open. Now, if they're both closed, well, then it doesn't work. So it, this is set up so that only one closes. And, and that's something that makes it different, at least on the high voltage side, from a traditional multi-stage unit. In a t traditional multi-stage unit, we think, all right, you have a Y1 call and a Y2 call. That's still true here on the low voltage side, but you do not have, you cannot have both of these contactors pulled in at the same time. Otherwise, it's definitely not going to function properly. So in order to have a potential difference from this side to this side, one has to be closed and one has to be open. So in low stage, it's going to be this one's closed and this one's open. In high stage, this one's going to be closed and this one's going to be open. But you're going to notice here what actually occurs um, because this is a, a subject that comes up often in debate is can you run a single phase motor backwards? And uh, this compressor kind of proves it, whether or not that's the reason why they had so many failures or not. That's a whole other question that I am not qualified to answer because I'm not an engineer. But what they're actually doing is they're swapping run and start. Uh, undisputedly, they're swapping run and start. And so when you're in high stage, then run is this winding. Run is typical. And then start is fed through the capacitors or not, it's not fed through because, you you know, I've talked about this in multiple podcasts and videos that you can't feed through a capacitor. But the it's it's the other other side from the capacitor of run. And then when it goes into low stage instead of high stage, this one opens and now it comes through this direction. And now you're feeding start the start side with the line with L1 and then you're feeding run now with the opposite side of the capacitor. So it's just a very interesting setup there. And I'm trying to figure out I haven't actually it's funny because I haven't actually even thought about this start relay. Let's think about I'm thinking about this with you in real time here. So now you have this start relay and it's going to be made through here until there's a path. Yeah, so it, it'll work either way. Yeah, so both the start and the and the run capacitors are going to be in the circuit in both high and low with the wired this way. So anyway, I thought it was pretty interesting. If you're not really good at reading wire di wiring diagrams, this might be a little bit confusing to see. But but if you have a little bit of experience, it'll it'll make a lot of sense. Depending on which one, which contactor is pulled in, that dictates which winding, whether run or start, is fed by line, and then which other side uh, is fed by the uh, opposite side of the capacitor. So you, you essentially are flipping start and run. 
which has a lot of interesting ramifications uh, because we've always, of course, been taught that start has a higher resistance than run. So what's that going to do? You know, is is the start winding really designed to be carrying that constant current that you would normally see on run? A lot of interesting questions, questions I don't necessarily have answers to, but that is how it works. And that is why it runs in one direction in high speed where it uh, engages both of the cylinders and then another direction at low speed when it only engages one. So hopefully you found that to be interesting. And that is the Bristol T8 series of compressors. This is specifically is a wiring diagram for a 38 YDB. It's an older carrier two-stage heat pump. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.